Joining us tonight is attorney Christine McCullough from the law firm of Conrad Barler and McCullough. Uh, Christine, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Chrissy. Thanks for being hey, on. Chrissy, hey, Chrissy. Thank you for being on. Uh, I, I imagine, and you, you, you practice family law. Um, I imagine you, you've been getting a lot of calls from, from people who maybe they already have their, their settlements in place. They have custody orders uh, that are set. Um, have you fielded questions? I mean, like, what if one party is very concerned about the social distancing, they're being very strict with all the rules, but then the other parent who shares custody of that child maybe is much laxer um, with these restrictions that we've been under. Do you have advice to those, to those people? Well, yes. In fact, um, our domestic relations court did issue uh, some pretty detailed guidelines um, for, for parenting plans and custody orders during the COVID crisis. Um, and there is a lot of conflict and difference in how, how parents are interpreting, um, you know, how to social distance. The answer, though, is that um, you, you cannot violate your custody or visitation order just because you disagree with how the other parent is handling it. So, um, what our guidelines say is that the court expects parents to comply with CDC recommendations and any state and local orders. But if you feel like there's a problem with the other parent doing that, you've got to file a motion with the court to address it. Okay, so you can't just on your own say, all right, uh, you're not following right. social distancing. I am um, no. until you do so. We're, you know, you can't see the child. Mm -hmm. You can't, you just can't no, do you risk being held in contempt of court if you did that, just like if you violated it at any other time. What if uh, one party tests positive for COVID-19? Does that change anything? That's actually specifically addressed. So, so common sense would say um, that the child should not be around that party. Right. Um, you know, I think the, the domestic judges would understand um, a little bit more if a parent couldn't get to court in time and decided not to send the child if they could not agree. I, I think they'd be forgiving about that. But the party would still need to file a motion to protect themselves and, you know, to respect the process of the fact that you are still not honoring an order. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it sounds like with both mm -hmm. questions I've been asking, I mean, it, it, you, you still have to follow the law. I mean, you can't just do things on your own, right. even though, you know, common sense would dictate what should take place, you still have to file those orders with the court. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, we know that, you know, this crisis has hit a lot of us um, economically. A lot of people have lost their jobs. I think in Alabama, it's 400,000 people filed from unemployment. Um, if you're a, a parent who you were paying um, child support um, or alimony and you've lost your job, what what happened? I mean, if you can't continue to pay the the amount that was set pre pandemic, what do you do? Mm, yeah, so that's a frustrating situation. Um, the law is very clear that alimony and child support cannot be modified until a modification action is filed. So even if you've lost your job um, and you cannot pay, the judge can't give you a break on that unless you file something to modify your obligation. And what's hard is that you could file that and not get to court for six months down the road. Right. Um, and technically you're still obligated. I will say that um, an inability to pay your obligation is a defense to being held in contempt. So while you may still owe the money, um, if you can show you were unable to pay, you may escape some of the penalties that you could face otherwise such as being thrown in jail or being fined or paying attorney's fees. Um, but once again, you, you've got to file something with the court as soon as possible just to protect yourself. Yeah, how, how is this playing out in, in real life? You mentioned six months. I mean, are, are people really having to wait that long to get these concerns addressed? Because, I mean, I would think if you, if you can't pay right now, I mean, you can't wait six months to get for a modification. Same with, you know, some of these custody arrangements. You can't wait six months. Yeah. Well, our judges uh, have utilized, you know, technology like Zoom um, to, to try and do virtual hearings for things that are legitimate emergencies. 
um, because the current order, which expires on May 15th um, out of the Supreme Court, says that unless there is a, a legitimate emergency, you cannot have uh, in-person hearings in court. Mm-hmm. So we're not sure what to expect as far as a, a timeline goes, um, but the judges are doing everything they can to address you know, anything uh, affecting the health and safety of children in particular. So even if you are able to get like an emergency hearing, how long even does that take? And then do both parties have to have the technical capabilities? Mm. You know, each party's with their attorney and they're on a Zoom call with the judge. I mean, how does this logistically work out? Well, um, if it is a legitimate emergency, the judges are very good about setting them, you know, within days. but yes, that you have to have the capability to participate uh, with technology. However, you can do that, you know, as you both know, even with um, just an uh, iPhone, which most people have. Mm-hmm. So if it is an absolute necessity that something be addressed, you know, it, it is possible to get in front of a judge. Okay. Um, if, if you owe child support, uh, this has been a common question, if you owe child support and you're getting that stimulus money and there, there might be some more stimulus money uh, down the line, is that subject to child support like back pay or how does that work or alimony? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it would be um, subject to uh, being seized probably certainly by garnishment if it went into your account. Um, just like any other funds you have. Um, What I'm not sure of, and which would be an interesting question, is, you know, the Department of Human Resources pursues child support for lots of people, and they are able to seize people's tax return, or tax refunds, rather. Um, And they have a special capability of doing that. Since these are federal funds being received, uh, they may have some capability of doing that with these funds as well. the, the court and a private attorney would not have any special capability to do that with these funds other than if they were to catch someone's account, you know, while the money was still in there after it had been deposited. Okay. Christine McCullough, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. If you have any additional questions uh, for Christine, you can reach her at 251-433-3968, or you can always uh, go online to conradbarlar.com. <laughs>